You are tuning into the Design MBA, which is a real life MBA podcast for designers. I'm your host, Jainil Dalal. So without further ado, Abhinav, thank you so much, man, for coming on the show. You know, um, I, I was just reading so much like about you, what you did, your videos and stuff. And my favorite part was, um, how do I put it? Like, so I think take, going back to your, you know, when you were going to do college, the thing that hit me the most is that you said that you kind of got okay grades in college. Is that correct? Yep. So throughout college, like I can tell you a little bit about what okay means in this scenario. I enrolled in computer science engineering because I watched the social network. Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's, let's do this. Let's build Facebook. Let's build the next Facebook. The first year, my GPA in India, it's out of 10. I got something like, like a six point something, (laughs) which is like just passing. And I was like, okay, it's because the first year isn't computer science. It was physics. chemistry, And I was like, okay, second year is going to be better. Second year was like a 6.3. And I was like, okay, like this is not going where I intended it to go. I need to figure out my own thing that I can do, my own game that I can play. That's what got me into design. Like I often joke, if I'd gotten really good grades, I wouldn't be forced to figure out design and oh, find my own path. That's so true, man. And by the way, I'm in the same boat as you. I think my GPA was it one time crossed seven, but the most of the time, like the average yeah. that I have for all the four years is 6.8 or something. And it was always around that. Yeah. And I remember, so I did um, my college from near my university in, in Gujarat. There we had like the mid sem exams and the semester end exams. So you had like two opportunities. So I remember uh, failing a lot of the mid sem exams, and then it's so ironic. I'm like I'm a designer now, and there was this industrial drawing dude. Like I cannot believe I actually failed in that in the <laughs> finals, and then you get like an IEF. And now when I look back at the people who were called the toppers, like they had like a nine point four um, GPA, they kind of like took the conventional route, which was okay, we're going to take a job at Deloitte. We're going to take a job at uh, Infosys or something. And they're there. And I think to your point, something about not being good enough in the education system there in India made you Mm. figure out, like, what is that for you? I think what happened was um, when I was in India, I remember like the scene going on, which was like majority of the people who were like stuck in this rat race where it was all about getting the GPA, getting that, that pointers is what I think they call it the pointer system. Yeah. So it was all about like, I want that pointers and everybody was just obsessed getting a job. And then there are a few people I remember who were more about like the three idiots movie. Mm-hmm. So there are very few people who were thinking like, what am I going to learn today? And they were like actually hacking things or doing freelancing. And I think maybe the, the landscape has changed now. I think you're probably more close to, I think now people want to explore and hack away things. Yeah. So when you're in college doing all these things, I mean, you also have Indian parents, man. So was there like ever a pressure? Like <laughs> the parents were like, oh my God, what yeah. is Abhinav doing, man? <laughs> For sure. I think it's easier said than done. Like, hey, figure stuff out in college. That's how it's done. Like for me, freelancing gave me an external validation. Okay which is learning design, you know, back then we were designing screens in Photoshop. Yeah. Like learning Photoshop and everything is chill, but unless you have this external validation from the outside world that tells you, Hey, you're doing okay. Actually it's just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. You don't feel confident. So freelance was that thing, which gave me the confidence. And then once I started doing freelance projects back then, you know, like the iPhone had come out a few years earlier. So everybody wanted to do an app. Like I had, like I was working with fitness trainers who were like, let's make our own fitness app. Working with somebody who was like, let's do an app that does X, Y, Z. So I did a bunch of that. And then another form of validation for me was that that was the time when the startup scene in India, in India started kicking up. Oh, wow. So I started getting then a lot more requests from homegrown startups. So mm-hmm. like my LinkedIn started blowing up, for example. Wow. Like, and I was a kid in college. I was like, oh shit, am I getting, like, to me it was like, why sit for placements, which is like this thing where, yeah, you know, the employer has this power. Well, so now I'm getting these messages on LinkedIn. <laughs> so I definitely use that to my advantage. There was this one time where I, I was like, mom, look at my LinkedIn. Like yeah. I was like, I was scrolling through my LinkedIn <laughs> messages and I was like, I have EA sports. I have this, that I have these companies sending me job requests. Now I'm not going to take them. Yeah. So don't get too excited. Yeah. But, uh, you know, things are okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that I was finally able to get some kind of job placement. I think it's called multi, yeah, multinational company, um, MNC in India. Mm-hmm. 
and uh the job offer dude was for uh 2.5 lakh rupees and again for preface this was in 2012 and i remember very vividly thinking that 2.5 lakh rupees and they had back then this santro you remember that car the santro mm. so that santro yeah, yeah. costed more than my salary and i also mm-hmm. remember that i went to this sony showroom and i saw this tv like a bravia a 40 inch led and if you wanted to get the sound system that even costed more than the salary and i was like damn dude mm. i think there's something better out there so i'm kind of wondering at that point you're doing freelancing were you making more money than than those job offers on on campus definitely so when it was time for placements which is it happens i think somewhere at the start of your third year and yeah. like into the fourth year i didn't like i didn't even fill out the forms for it <laughs> i was like you know number one the best i can get would probably be tcs or infosys yeah. because of my low gpa yeah because typically the better companies like the microsoft and amazon have gpa caps like ah, you need to yes. be above an 8.5 to yeah. even apply and then secondly i was like you know these are uh, none of these are design roles like yeah. i don't want to waste all of the stuff that i've done and now get into an engineering role so at that point i also had a little bit of leverage mm-hmm. which is i could say no to a lot of these job offers on my linkedin because i was like hey you know i am making a good amount just through freelancing mm-hmm. so i can actually wait for a good opportunity that actually breaks me out of freelance that's insane man just thinking about it like i just i'm feeling very nostalgic <laughs> thinking back in the about the college years like i wish i could go back and tell myself all is well mm. <laughs> everything is going to be okay yeah <laughs> yeah to check out the audio version of this episode you can go to designmba.show the link is in the description uh, here you can listen to the full episode i did with janiel to check out the video version and clips from this episode go to my youtube channel and you will find them there